All right, enzymes and pH. Um, enzymes are also affected not just by temperature, but by the pH of the solution it's in. So here's our enzyme. There's our active site with its complementary shape to the substrate. This one happens to be an enzyme that breaks something down. It could be an enzyme that makes something, but doesn't matter, we're going to use this. If we change the pH of the solution, so we make it either more acidic or more alkaline, what happens is the enzyme um, denatures, which means the active site changes shape. which means that the substrate, the substance that the enzyme um, is either making or breaking down, substrate no longer fits the active site. Remember that the active site is complementary, a complementary shape to the substrate, the substrate will fit into it. And it's a specific shape, so one enzyme um, has a certain shape of active site that will only fit that particular substrate, complementary shape and specific. So when it's denatured, the uh, active sites change shape, the substrate no longer fits into it, um, and so the reaction doesn't occur. Now, one of the things that will happen is if you gradually increase the pH, so let's imagine um, that the pH was of, of this particular enzyme, the optimal pH, the pH it works best at, was um, 6.5. What happens if we decrease it slightly to say 6.2? The rate of the reaction decreases. Doesn't necessarily stop completely, but it would decrease. The same if we, you know, went the other way. Maybe went to 6.7. Um, we would also be decreasing it. If that's the optimal value, changing it will decrease the rate of reaction. Rate of reaction meaning how many times per second or how many times per minute is this reaction occurring. Okay. If we were to graph it, it's a slightly different graph to the temperature one. So rate of the reaction. We get this typical bell-shaped curve, something like that. There's the optimal pH top, the pH it works best at, so you know, our example here is 6.5, changing it will decrease the rate of reaction, changing it by a lot will decrease the rate of reaction a lot, and at these extremes it becomes permanently denatured. It's possible, very often, if it's just a slight change in pH, to get the reaction to go back the other way. Why does this matter? Well, it turns out in your body, where there's so many you know, enzymes are so vital to all the chemical reactions that are happening in your body. The pH does vary a bit, and there are slight variations all the time. You might come across um, this term, a buffer, which is a chemical, and there are natural buffers, and when you work in laboratories, you, you have um, chemicals that do this. A buffer is a solution that stops the pH changing too much. If you like, it soaks up um, any changes in the pH. And it's because of this problem with enzymes. You need your enzymes to be working optimally as much as possible. Um, why might your pH change? Well, just to give you an example, uh, in aerobic respiration, when you produce carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide, what it does is it mixes with water and it forms something called carbonic acid, which is a weak acid. And so that would lower the pH. So just the fact that you're respiring will lower the pH of your blood. And that's something that's happening all the time. Obviously, the more you aerobically respire, the more exercise you do, for example, you might expect it to, your blood to become more and more acidic. And, of course, there are all mechanisms to make sure your blood doesn't become too acidic, but that's just to give you an idea of why it's so important um, that the body maintains um, the correct pH as much as possible because it's constantly having to um, adapt to any changes that happen in the cells.